Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, where we strive to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow the jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region. Because Business Matters, I'm Gene Moreno. This edition is all about local economic development in the Roanoke Valley, from big box to mom and pop. Jill Loop is Director of Economic Development for Roanoke County. Mark Nelson is Economic Development Manager for the City of Roanoke. Ben Tripp is the Salem City Planner. And Angie Tuning is Executive Director for the Vinton Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome all to the program, to Business Matters. And um, I want to start out in maybe with a round robin. I want to get a feel in general terms from each of you about um, what, what's, what's changed as far as economic development over the past year. When, when the pandemic set in, it seemed like the county, the city, Vinton, Salem are on a roll. But so, you know, let's start with you, Ben Tripp and Salem. You guys were working on downtown, things going up. What what changed as far as when the pandemic set in and, and especially at the beginning when a lot of things were shut down, what was the what did the city have to do as far as planning for the future adjustments, the first the, the first adjustments you had to make? Sure. Well, I think the first adjustments we had to make really were with keeping in touch with our businesses and finding out what they needed. Um, you know, the environment changed totally overnight. And what do we need to do with them to help them survive and help them get through this? So we've reached out to our businesses and continue to do that on an ongoing basis to find out what their needs are, what challenges they're facing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in terms of downtown, we've continued with that project and actually made a lot of progress with it, uh, even during the pandemic. So that continues to, to roll along. And really that, that outdoor dining and that more open public space in downtown Salem will really be a, a lifeline to those businesses and, and has helped them out a lot. Mm -hmm. Mark Nelson in Roanoke City, uh, talk about what happened there. You know, a lot of downtown local retail shops and restaurants, Mark, uh, and how they adapted to stay alive. And I know that Roanoke City took some of the CARES Act money and through a couple different iterations were, you know, giving micro grants out to some of these companies to try to help keep these businesses alive. But talk about how the mindset changed a year ago. Well, the mindset changed in addition to, you know, we, we have four economic development specialists, a financial stability specialist, and the model had previously been in-person meetings, phone calls, they come, you know, clients come to us, we go to them. That all had to change because we had to shut down our offices. Uh, and so, and a lot of our folks were working from home and that actually made us more nimble because, you know, you had your eight to five and you would do work afterwards on occasion, but with working from home, it actually made you do more more often. So we were working more on nights and weekends, trying to help our businesses uh, stay afloat in a lot of cases. Uh, for a few months, you mentioned the, the CARES grants. It was an all hands on deck process for a few months while we distributed those grant funds. Uh, there were a lot of nights and weekends. And then we also had to work very closely with the planning department and with, uh, with the fire marshal's office to go around and try to help not just the downtown restaurants and businesses, but the ones in Wasina, uh, the ones in Grandin Village, the ones in South Roanoke, uh, to come up with innovative plans that allowed them to stay open. Ben mentioned downtown, downtown dining, and that was one of the things that we had to do, a lot of outdoor adjustments to outdoor dining to help these businesses. You know, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, takeout, Mark, became a big thing. And the fact that you've got several thousand residents downtown now, mm -hmm. did that really help keep a lot of these uh, restaurants and sh shops alive? I think it did, yes. I think that was certainly a factor. I think a lot of the folks... Um, in addition to the downtown residents, a lot of the folks in the city also found ways to go out and support. You know, there was a very, uh, very big push through uh, Downtown Roanoke Incorporated, through our office and through other outlets to show, hey, we have to support these local businesses. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, I live in the Wasina neighborhood and the restaurant Bloom is four doors down from me. And so there was a real push to support them and their takeout efforts. So yes, I think that definitely helped, but I think it was basically a citywide approach as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jill Loop with Roanoke County. I know, Jill, that, um, you know, every so often there'd be something coming out from Roanoke County. Uh, talk about some of the ways that Roanoke County tr tried to support local businesses. I think there was CARES Act fund funding involved as well over the past year. Yeah, we um, had a grant program. We called it the Small Business Recovery Program. And we administered $1.6 million in grants to support over 300 small businesses throughout the county. Um, almost all of us had our own 
grant programs on this Zoom meeting um, that we're trying to launch to respond to the needs of the businesses at the time. And I think that it was very helpful to a lot of companies who were trying to figure out how to stay open, to pivot during difficult circumstances. And, you know, we, we've been all trying to come together to provide as much assistance as we can. And all of us have been challenged to, to rush to figure out how to make that happen as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. You know, before I forget, um, there was some good news, of course, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Mack Trucks plan opening, but talk about this recent announcement about some uh, out parcel buildings at Tanglewood Mall. And by the time this goes on the air, supposedly construction will, will be underway. This will be along Electric Road in front of the Carillion Children's Center, which will open, I guess, sometime this year. So they'll have a built-in audience there. But talk about the, was it Panda Express and Aspen Dental and Chipotle uh, a pizza joint and Jersey Mike's and talk about that. Is that just the beginning of what you might see as far as the transformation of that whole corridor? Yeah. So we're really excited about the growth at Tanglewood that's been announced and also what's coming. Uh, two new out parcel buildings will be constructed. They're about 7,000 square foot each. Uh, so far five uh, tenants that you mentioned have been secured for those buildings. New to the market is Blaze Pizza. They are kind of like uh, the Chipotle of pizzas. You go through the line and make, choose your own ingredients and make your own pizza on the spot. So that's kind of cool and unique and new. There are other announcements coming. There are leases in the works. The Tanglewood owners are working on a number of projects right now that I'm really excited about. Um, so we're gonna be trailing those announcements over the next several months. And hopefully by 2022, we're gonna have a, a transformed mall area. Carillion Children's is really the catalyst for that growth, as well as the infrastructure improvements that are occurring on the 419 corridor. We have about $30 million worth of transportation projects approved uh, and that are already underway in part and will continue over the next several years. So you're gonna see a lot of transformation in the 419 corridor. I'm just curious, those outbuildings, are they, are they gonna be built more towards the roadway to create more sort of a main street feel? Jill? Yeah, they're gonna be built on the electric road 419 frontage um, in front of the former JC Penney space, which is now gonna be Carillion Children. So that's the first of uh, two buildings that are coming, two more that are coming. So. Mm -hmm. Angie Tuning is not an economic development director, but she's the biggest cheerleader for Vinton. You, you could in the Vinton area, you can imagine. Um, and they just cut a couple more ribbons. So, what's been the secret, Angie, in Vinton as far as um, there's been a number of ribbon cuttings and things opening up? A uh, farmer Gesa is going to expand. The Dogwood restaurant's going to expand. Uh, what what's the secret there uh, as far as uh, moving forward for the for the town? Well, I tell you, we just have a great group of people down here. Our, our town government is amazing. Of course, Roanoke County and their support of everything that we do. Um, it's just, it, it, we didn't want to lose that momentum that we had that you mentioned earlier um, before the pandemic hit. And I don't think we have that much. Um, again, to ditto what everybody else said about helping your restaurants, do the takeout, be creative of getting people in their restaurants. We don't have a lot of outdoor space here because we just don't have it at most of our restaurants but they were very creative um, so I think our government Pete and the the town uh, folks down there are just working tirelessly every day to get something to keep going down here so um, we're just excited every day when something new happens you know new things are opening all the time which is it's so exciting anytime and especially during a pandemic mm -hmm. I think there's an expansion at the business park also Yes. Was it Cardinal Glass expanding? Yes, and we have a, you know, the, the Big Lots is moving to another location here in Vinton. And, um, you know, it's just, it's exciting. Every day there's something new and exciting happening. Ben Tripp with the city of Salem. I want to ask you, you know, Salem has been known for a long time as the, uh, the city of champions, championship city. The Stag Bowl was there for a long time, D3 basketball, D2 and D3 softball. I covered a lot of that stuff. And that, that, the CIAA was there, championships. Uh, talk about that. That went away, brought a lot of people to town, Ben. How big a hit was that for 
you know, the city of Salem and the region when, when these things went away because of the pandemic? And, and are you looking for some kind of a comeback this year? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, anytime you don't have an event that brings a lot of people into the community like that, there you do feel that impact. Um, and that's not unique to us. You think of all the events that have been canceled, concerts that have been canceled, trips that have been canceled, as people have worked with that. Um, but the key for us, I think, has been adapting to that challenge. So, you know, taking an event that perhaps was inside before and making it something that's a drive-through event or making it something that you know is you can do in a way that you can still have the event and still have people there but do it safely um and you know we've now had a year to think about how to do those things right to learn from from those experiences so for example we're thinking about you know things like old salem days you know which is still a long ways off in the fall and a lot of people but, a lot of people Right, sure. Yeah. And, and the Rotary Club of Salem handles that for the most part. But like how that event can be reimagined, uh, if you will, in a way that that is safe and still works. It's still a fun and great event. And yeah, I really got to hand it to our, our Parks and Rec staff and our folks at the Civic Center who just risen to the occasion on those things and, and tried to find ways to still have value for do you expect to see, is there going to, will there be softball at Moyer Complex this year, sports complex? Are you planning on that? We're hoping to, yes. Okay. It's, and I know, you know I was talking, we, sorry, go ahead. No, I was, saying, I was talking to Alan Lawrence with the, the <laughs> Salem Red Sox and their season opens a month late mm -hmm. in May. And by May, the cap on capacity at a thousand may be lifted, but it'll still be some kind of a, a, a percentage, but we'll be able to get more people in the park and that'll make a big difference. Absolutely. Yeah. And some of it will be literally a game time decision, right? As we work through the challenges, the virus and, and how our, our country and our, our localities handle all that. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. To, I wanted to Mark, I wanted to Mark Nelson with Roanoke City. I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, the innovation corridor. Okay. Talk about that, uh, what that entails. And, and do you see some, can there be some momentum from that innovation corridor as far as really spinning, spinning it off, Mark, into really creating jobs? Well, what when, you, when, you talk, first of all? when you talk about the innovation corridor, there really is two different concepts there. There's the physical corridor itself, which is basically Jefferson Street, uh, that mile long stretch that runs from uh, from Carillion's uh, Hospital all the way up to about where the ramp building is, maybe up to Elm Avenue. Um, and then you have uh, the general concept of all those all those um, assets together. For the physical side, what the city has really tried to do is fill the spaces to create an atmosphere. Obviously, COVID put a stop to some of that work, but what we're starting to do now is try to create that atmosphere again. Um, one of the things we're, we're launching now is uh, we're starting to work on the underpass. If you're coming on Jefferson Street, heading south towards the Virginia Tech campus, towards Carillion, you know, you go under that overpass where 581 is. And, and so we're really working on beautifying that, making that to, that to serve as a connector between downtown and between uh, the campus to the south. So you have that, and then you have the, uh, the, the, the assets themselves, which we try to collect, collectively market through Roanoke Innovates. And uh, we're starting to see the momentum, you know, the, the ramp accelerator is at the top of the corridor in the Gill Memorial Building. Um, they just got funding through a grant given to the Valley's Innovation Council. So now they're hosting two cohorts a year. They're right now doing interviews for their, their spring cohort, which will be focused on life sciences. So we're starting to see momentum there and they'll still do their fall cohort, which is open more towards general businesses. Um, we're starting to see the demand for space increase. Uh, a, lot of these, uh, a lot of these folks that are coming up with uh, entrepreneurial efforts out, out of Carillion and Virginia Tech, they often can't do those in the same places that they have their day jobs in. So they're looking for places to land close to where they work uh, their day jobs. And so we're starting to see demands for space. So yes, uh, the momentum is starting to build. It took a little while. We had to build the infrastructure and gain the support, but yes, it will eventually uh, in very short, short order turn into jobs. You know, this Mark might be sort of an off the wall question, but whenever I drive down 581 past downtown Roanoke, I'm thinking, I think Roanoke's at the point they need another tall building, maybe something, a little taller than the Wells Fargo building, but the in the Morano complex, perhaps. There you go. I'll go for that. But in 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 this day and age where uh, you know you may not need everybody in an office, are those days gone for a city the size of Roanoke? Or can you envision a time somewhere down the road where Roanoke might need a a, a vertical office space that goes up twenty stories, twenty five stories? 
Well, right now, I think uh, we're just trying to see where the where where things pan out in terms of people coming back downtown. Uh, the, the businesses that we've spoke to that are based downtown have shown a desire to bring their folks back into the offices. But how quickly they do that is going to be is going to vary on the independent business. Um, right now, obviously, a lot of folks are working from home. But over time, as the as the, the threat of the virus decreases and people become increasingly more vaccinated, uh, companies like will start to bring people back downtown. Uh, the demand for a 25 story building um, is, I, you know, it's hopefully something you'd like to see on the horizon. Um, so I'm going to optimistically say, yes, eventually you will see a 25 uh, story building in downtown. Rome. OK, you know, Angie, I wanted to ask you uh, quickly, um, what's the mood of the, 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 the cha chamber members, the Vinton Area Chamber of Commerce? Uh, you know, overall, how did they do over the past year? Did you lose some members to the pandemic or what? You know, what's the overall mood? And I would imagine that with some of the recent loosening of restrictions, they have to feel better about the, the future. Absolutely. Um, you know, we didn't lose members. Um, our members have been um, very supportive of us because I think they see the efforts that we're putting towards supporting them. Um, we have done anything and everything that we can to help them uh, stay afloat and stay keep their doors open, um, whether it's live videos or just promoting everything they have going on. So we haven't lost members, which is a blessing. Um, so we just, we're all kind of hunkered down and, and teamed up and, and are excited about the, 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 the lift of, of the regulations right now. So um, I think things can just get better. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a question for Mark, Ben and Jill. I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, the joint property off Woodhaven Road, which I think is like a hundred acres and uh, a new industrial authority was created for the three localities to get in on that, the city, the county, and, and the city of Salem. Um, has there been a lot of interest in that, or are you still holding out for that one big box company to come in there, or, you know, what's the thinking at this point? And I'm just wondering if, if the pandemic really pushed a lot of these decisions back, do you think, as far as companies? I'm getting a so, lot of uh, interest and in activity, actually. Um, a number of projects, large scale projects have demonstrated interest in the Woodhaven property. Um, it's strategically located. Um, the access is great. The property is highly visible and there's a lot of uh, regional interest in uh, togetherness in terms of the cities and the county working together. So I think you're gonna see some more activity as time goes on. I don't think it's slowed very much at this juncture. It's just a matter of getting the property to a, a higher degree of readiness, getting it graded, cleared, and those kinds of things. So site prep is underway and the marketing is underway and we'll just see what it generates in the future, but we're all in it together and we want it to be a significant investment, a transformative project. So. Um, we're all supporting that in the future. Mark, these things take time though, huh? These type of big projects. They, they do take time. And I think Jill hit the nail on the head. There, is, there has been a number of companies and inquiries that have looked at the site. Um, we just wanna make sure that we get the, the right company or companies to locate there because it is a premier space and it deserves premier companies to come in and utilize it. And Ben, I would imagine that uh, that property is pretty close to Salem that if you get some good high paying jobs in there, it's got to benefit downtown Salem, uh, the, the restaurants and shops there. It's got to be, that's got to be something you look forward to. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's the idea behind what all these localities are doing from a regional perspective is realizing that, you know, this amazing business or companies or whatever that we get here, it affects all of us. You know, we're all working together and that's, that's a newer, more progressive way of doing economic development. So it's great to, you know, to be working with our partners in the city and county on it. Jill Loop, I wanted to ask you, Roanoke County is putting together a five-year economic development strategic plan, Elevate Roanoke County 2026. And you were telling me this is sort of the first kind of a long range plan of its kind and, and talk about the motivation for, for doing that. Yeah, well, it's a good time to do it, actually, because of the uh, emerging from the pandemic. We wanted to kind of look at our economic condition, analyze demographic trends, changes in consumer preferences and buying patterns and habits. 
Uh, there's a lot going on in the economy right now, and now is the time to plan for the future. So we wanted to start that process now. We were able to leverage two different grants to retain a consulting arm of Virginia Tech's Office of Economic Development to help us uh, move through this process over the next year. So um, we're hoping that we can establish uh, community policies and, and strategies and ideas that the community can embrace for the foundation of economic development in the county in the future. So we're very excited to finally have a board adopted plan moving forward. And you've got uh, several plans, of course, the reimagined 419 plan, which is already well underway, but you're, you want to reimagine the Oak Grove area and the Hollins area. Where are those projects at in comparison to, say, 419, which they're already adding a lane and obviously about to start constructing at Tanglewood Mall? Where are those two projects at? So... Uh all of the plans are currently in the works. Uh, the 419 plan's been adopted. The Oak Grove, the Hollands plan's been adopted. They're all in the works at this juncture. And frankly, we're <laughs> launching a comprehensive plan in the county as well this year. So it will be kind of like the comp plan is the overarching umbrella underneath, which is the economic development plan. Under that will be the 419 plan, the Hollands plan and the Oak Grove plan. So there's, there's a lot of work underway. Everything starts with a good planning document and community engagement, community input, and <laughs> we're doing it all at once and it's moving forward in Roanoke County. <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask, and this, this is the, I wanted to ask about the Greenway system. I know Ben Tripp, you were the, the former chair of the Roanoke Valley uh, Greenway Commission. When that thing actually gets connected and you can actually go from Vinton through various trails all the way to Salem. Uh, what will that do economic development wise? Will that be able to spread, especially if you're a biker or a runner, uh, especially a biker, will spread more people around and get them to all different parts of the valley and get people in here uh, to visit? Will that be an added asset, do you think? I'll start with you, Ben, as far as getting the whole thing connected, getting around all the right of way issues, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you're speaking specifically of the Roanoke River Greenway. Right. which is really the backbone of a much larger system. I mean, there are trails that extend to Carvin's Cove, that extend to Explore Park, that will go to the AT uh, and many other places. And, and it, it really ties together all of the localities here in the region that way. Mm -hmm. But you're exactly right. I mean, it's something that, that we as a valley, as a region are becoming known for, you know, our, our greenways, our outdoor, opportunities and experiences, McAfee's Knob. I mean, there's so many natural uh, uh, attributes to the area that we have that we can build on. Um, and that's a, a huge part of our economic development, I think. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and if we see if you were in Vinton, you can go from uh, Glade Creek, Tinker Creek, then you can hook into the Roanoke River Greenway. And Mark Nelson, just talk about what the Roanoke River Greenway is done for the city. I remember when Nelson Harris was the mayor, I told him the two best things Roanoke ever did was the Greenway and the Highland Park Dog Park. But uh, talk about that. And it's really gotten people into it's It's raised property values in Southeast Roanoke. Just talk about what the Greenway's done for, done for the city of Roanoke. Well, you know, I think two of the key examples you can look at is, you know, I live in the Wasina neighborhood, which if you're traveling on the Greenway, you go right by the Green Goat, the Wasina Tap Room, now Bloom, R&D Coffee. It's really given uh, given that neighborhood new life. It definitely helped in, with the revitalization. And then you go a little bit further down the road, heading towards Vinton, you pass Blue Cow Ice Cream and the work that's being done over at the bridges and over near Virginia Tech. Um, one of the great things about not only just the city of Roanoke, but the entire valley is when you have a system that's connected and goes to so many places, like Ben mentioned, Carvin's Cove, you know, and various other locations, we have the folks here who are actively going to use all of those things. So you have people who run 100 mile races and ride their bike 100 miles, and they're going to go to those places. And so you're going to see a lot of flow between the county and the city and Salem and Vinton, because we have the people who have that outdoor lifestyle to take advantage of it. I mean, you have people who walk a mile every day, then turn around and go home. But then you also have people who ride 100 miles. And so when you can free flow between all those different places, it just opens up unlimited opportunities economic development wise. We only got about a couple of minutes left. I wanted to go round robin real quick and maybe get a quick answer. Uh, Jill Loop, optimistic about things in Roanoke County. Mack trucks got off the ground last year, but are you optimi optimistic as we come out of the pandemic to some extent that uh, 
things are going to be good. I think it's going to be a great 2021. Um, this year is starting off with a bang. There's a lot of activity currently announced underway and or uh, unannounced up behind the scenes. So it's going to be a great year. You're always leaving me hanging, Jill. So, uh, <laughs> Angie, can we see, will we see more ribbon cuttings? Do you think this year in in Vinton? Absolutely. You know, during a pandemic, we had three restaurants open, two announced that they're expanding. Um, a couple other properties are have announced that they're they're opening and and uh, renovating as we speak. Um, so we are doing whatever we can down here to promote not only Vinton but all of all of our area. And it's Ben Tripp, real quick. Everybody. Ben Tripp, quickly feeling bullish about uh, Salem this year? Absolutely. I think we're headed in the right direction. There's going to be a lot of construction downtown, and as that whole thing continues to upgrade, we've got other new businesses out in West Main Street. Uh, and a lot of our older ones kind of continue to improve their facilities and to remodel and, and bring a lot of new growth and just, just facelift to things. And quickly, Mark Nelson, to wrap up, do you expect when, when things start to really emerge, that is even going to be some kind of a boom as far as people coming downtown or, or things like that? I think so. I think there's a real sense of pent up demand. Uh, people want to travel. People want to get out. People just want to go and walk around on a Friday night and go to their favorite restaurant and enjoy being out. I think you'll see more of that. Uh, we're starting to see uh, a lot of the, the projects that we had online. Uh, the developers kind of you know, took their feet out of the water during the COVID process, but now they're starting to put their feet back in. So uh, yes, I, I, we're hopeful and we're bullish on the idea of a boom because I think people really are going to want to get outside and, and enjoy life downtown and in the various neighborhoods. All right, we'll have to leave it there. I want to thank all my guests for talking economic development today. Uh, I'm Gene Moreno. This is Business Matters. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.